Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Hello, podcast listeners. I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins. And on this episode of the podcast, we're going to tell the story of a freak accident that happened during one of the most popular annual events that occurred every summer in southwest Virginia. And Rod, we're talking about the Tri-State Singing Convention. It's a tradition that's gone on for years and years and years, Steve, in Big Stone Gap. It was held every June and has been held, I guess, in every or every June in Bullet Park in Big Stone Gap, bringing in gospel groups from all around the country, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Well, the convention's first appearance was in 1920, and most of the gatherings are pretty much as you'd expect, with families, friends, and churches attending to listen to their favorite Southern gospel groups play. Most, but not all, because the gathering in 1959 was a bit different. How different was it, Steve? I mean, what happened? What was so different about it that time? Well, that year, 10,000 people, which is twice the population of the town of Big Stone Gap, showed up for the singing convention with many of the folks parking on what's called Aviation Road, which is across the Powell River from Bullet Park. In those days, there was a well-used suspension footbridge, which connected the park directly with Aviation Road crossing the river. Local residents had used the bridge for decades, and even though concerns about the bridge had been raised before, most notably in an open letter to the mayor and town council published in the Big Stone Gap Post newspaper on June 14, 1911, entitled, An Instrument of Torture. I guess that pretty much says it. Yes, it does. Uh, In that letter, the writer deplores the decayed and unsafe condition of the bridge. Steve, ironically, exactly 48 years to the day that the letter was published, that anonymous author was proved correct as the bridge suffered a catastrophic failure, plunging several people 30 feet into the Powell River as they were crossing to go to the singing convention. Harold Culbertson, 55, of Big Stone Gap, and Milton B. Bishop, 61, of Bristol, Virginia, ended up in critical condition with Bishop dying nine days later from injuries sustained in the fall. Charlie Tipton, 19 years old, of Clinchport, was transported to Holston Valley Community Hospital in Kingsport, where his condition was described as good. Hospitalized at St. Mary's Hospital in Norton was Christine Collins, 12 years old, and Charlotte Bledsoe, 16 years old. Well, a total of 10 persons were hurt in the bridge collapse. Bonnie Collins, Mary Ann Collins, Bill Culbertson, Rosanna Bledsoe, and Jean Stevens weren't hurt badly enough to have to go to the hospital. They were treated at the scene and released. Now, Rod, according to news reports of the day, Culbertson was the most seriously injured at the scene. He received a possible spine injury, head cuts, fractured ribs and wrist, and possible internal injuries. Now, Mr. Bishop had multiple fractures of his wrists, head cuts, and internal injuries. Witnesses said Mr. Bishop saved Culbertson's life by holding his head up out of the water until aid reached them, even though both of Mr. Bishop's arms were broken. Wow. Well, later investigation revealed that one of the two-inch steel suspension cables snapped at its anchor point, causing a total failure of the bridge. According to reports, 15 to 30 people were on the bridge when it collapsed. Most of those, though, were able to either keep from being flung into the water by hanging on to the other intact cable and climbing to safety. Well, as you can imagine, something like this caused quite a commotion in the town. An ambulance and fire truck in the town picked up some of the injured for transport, with ambulances from Pennington Gap arriving to help and others in Norton and Lebanon on standby, all as a result of an appeal made on the local Big Stone Gap radio station. Witnesses said that they had seen some boys shaking the bridge not long before it fell, but there's no indication that that had anything to do with the bridge collapse. Well, another witness, D.C. Fraley, who lived on Aviation Road and who was sitting on his front porch at the time of the accident, stated that it happened so fast that he didn't actually see the bridge fall but he did hear the screams of those who were crossing. Fraley's friend, A.B. Mullins, was there with him and rushed to the scene where he helped 20 to 30 people climb back onto the riverbank from what was left of the bridge. Now, looking back once again to that open letter in the Post on June 14, 1911, 
It seems almost like the writer was able to see the future. As he wrote at the time, the bridge, quote, I should say, is difficult and unsafe. Loosely and unevenly tensioned, though often tightened, it quickly sags from weakness of cable anchorage and is likely at any time to collapse and injure or kill pedestrians on it, end quote. He also reminds us that there were other unrecorded accidents on this very bridge and that the reputation to Big Stone Gap would suffer if during a festival or other event that attracted out-of-town folks, quote, it would not recommend the Gap to kill a lot of visitors, end quote. It's like he could see the future, wouldn't it? Wow, it did. It really did. And and they never have rebuilt that bridge. Uh, I think the pylons are still there, if I remember correctly, but... Um, you don't get to cross that river right there on that bridge anymore to get to Bullock Park. Wow. And that's the story of the swinging bridge collapse of 1959. Another story in the history of this place we call Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast at iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or on your favorite podcast app. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash stories of Appalachia. We're on Twitter as well at Story Appalachia. Till next time, so long, everybody. 